there. And I mean, nowhere is sacred. Annie. First, the DVLA and your names and addresses. We know it sells them to private parking companies. We know those companies then use the details to pursue drivers for charges that can be huge. We've now discovered how much the DVLA make from it all, an estimated £3.4 million in the last year. It says it has strict rules to stop your information being misused. Really? Victoria Derbyshire reports. Aggressive clamping, extortionate ticket charges and threatening letters. The private parking sector has long had an image problem. So when Watchdog first revealed the DVLA was selling on your details, there was outrage, and the then Transport Minister was even forced to respond. Some time ago I announced we were going to do a thorough review of the circumstances in which the DVLA released private information. And the upshot of that review? From 2009, companies would only be able to access your details if they agreed to abide by a strict new document. And this is it, the BPA Approved Operator Scheme Code of Practice. 15 pages of conditions, covering everything from the design of tickets and signs to the gathering of photographic evidence and the procedures to follow when a driver appeals against a charge. But one of the most important sentences comes right near the start. To stay a member of the BPA, you must keep to the conditions of the code. But how strongly is the BPA enforcing its own code? and how many BPA members are being allowed to flout some of its key rules. Appendix B 7.1 Photographs must refer to and confirm the incident which you claim was unauthorised. A time and date stamp should be included. In January this year, Luke Hughes got a ticket for leaving his car in his own parking bay. The permit's got a number on it which, which corresponds to the number of the, the parking space that I park in and that's, that's my personal space, no one else can use that one. I park there every day and have done since I, since I moved here in December. The ticket was from UK Parking Control Limited, whose website boasts clients like Royal Mail, B&Q and Tesco, and it proudly displays their BPA approved operator status. But how do they comply with that rule on photographs? Well, these are the pictures they showed to Luke. There's no time or date stamp as there should be. It also doesn't confirm that the parking was unauthorised. In fact, Luke argues it even appears to show his permit in his windscreen. Their photograph, um, as far as I'm concerned, proves that they're wrong and that I'm in the right. I've done absolutely nothing wrong. And how they can pursue it when their own photographic evidence supports me is just absolutely beyond me. UK Parking Control have rejected Luke's two appeals. They say his permit is not visible in the windscreen and say their decision is final. I don't think I've done anything wrong at all. I think it's just a mistake that's been made by a parking attendant, but the company obviously feel that because of the size of the company, they can bully people into paying tickets, even when they're not their fault. We found other companies whose photographic evidence is inconclusive. These photos sent by Parking Eye Limited in response to a driver's appeal aren't timed or dated, so it's impossible to know when they were taken. Some companies even charge drivers £10 to see the photographic evidence against them. Surprisingly, that isn't against the code, but we've found plenty of other breaches. Section 14.6. If you receive a challenge or appeal, you must acknowledge or reply to the challenge within 14 days. In September last year, Julie Greensmith dropped her husband off at Luton Airport. I pulled up at the uh, traffic lights that were on red and uh, my husband got out, I carried on, didn't cause any obstruction to traffic, just followed the line of traffic and uh, went and parked my car. A few weeks later, she received a parking enforcement notice for pulling up in a no-stop zone. She sent a letter of appeal straight away. But APCOA Parking Limited, whose ANPR cameras monitor the airport, took 98 days to respond. That's 84 days more than specified in the code. And even though their photo clearly showed Julie's car in stationary traffic on a roundabout, they rejected her appeal. It was nearly three months before they even got back to me. And when I received it on the 2nd of February this year, I was, I was shocked uh, that they're still asking me for money when I haven't done anything wrong. The BPA says its code is designed to drive up standards in the private parking industry. 
but it only commits to visiting members once a year to check that they're abiding by it fully. Is that why some have been able to breach this most serious clause? Section 15.4 You must not use terms which imply you are acting under statutory authority. This will include terms such as fine or penalty. Unlike the police and local authorities, private parking companies have no power under the criminal justice system. So, pretending that they do is classed as a misrepresentation of authority. Yet we've found BPA-approved members doing just that. Lamorna Cove near Penzance, and a car park operated by Searchlight Security and Parking Solutions. Its local reputation is such that even a Cornwall tourism website warns visitors of overzealous enforcement of parking rules. But the company is less zealous about the rules it's supposed to abide by. Its signs give no geographical address as they're supposed to, only a PO box number. And here on its website, a word the code specifically outlaws, fine, a clear misrepresentation of authority. Yet, according to the British Parking Association, Searchlight Security is a member of its approved operator scheme and therefore able to buy your details from the DVLA. As is Parking Eye, which, Watchdog can reveal, bought more names and addresses from the DVLA than any other private parking company in 2010. Here's their sign in a Morrison's car park in North London, filmed last week. Here's their BPA-approved logo. And here they are blatantly misrepresenting their authority with the use of the word penalty. Just a day after we contacted them, by amazing coincidence, they covered it up. Incredibly, although the BPA's code was published in 2009, it gave companies until October 2010 to remove words like fine and penalty. Even more incredibly, it's given parking eye until June 2011. So the company won't be punished and can carry on buying your details from the DVLA. Is this code worth the paper it's written on? Well, that's a question we all want the answer to. So with me now is David Evans from the DVLA and from the British Parking Association, Patrick Troy. Thank you for coming in, gentlemen. And let me remind you, the only way parking companies, who Mr. Troy represents, can get my name and address or your name and address is because the DVLA agrees to hand over those addresses. Are you still comfortable with that? Yes, we only release information to people under very strict controls and only when it's lawful to do so. You see, you talk about tough safeguards. How tough are the safeguards we've seen there? We work closely with Patrick and the team at the BPA, but uh, it's right that all these cases are now subject to an investigation by BPA, and I've asked Patrick for a report on each case. Are you disturbed about this? Um, I shall wait to see what the investigations show. But just from um, our evidence? Um, from, from what we've seen, it's clear that all these cases are rightly passed to BPA for investigation. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't blame motorists for thinking that you get 3.4 million, nearly 3.5 million uh, a year revenue from this, and maybe that's your priority. We make no profit out of this. Uh, yeah. What we do is try to recover our costs for the release of this information direct from industry so those bills don't fall to anyone else. Mr. Toy, you're not policing this, are you? Uh, yes, we absolutely are, and uh, I think it's important to put this into some form of context because you featured there um, the minister talking a few years back about uh, the proposal to put in place this, this scheme. Yeah. And what we have now doesn't compare with what we had then. We now have... Oh, you're quite happy very... with this now, are you? No, I'm not happy. Of course yeah. I'm not happy with some of the, the issues that have been yeah. raised in your piece. But if you'd run it four years ago, it would be far, far worse. And we've seen very significant improvements. So it's improvements bad, but not as bad. Is that what you're saying? It's improving. And it will... It's not perfect. And not we've for never those pretended people, Not for those watchdog viewers. It's not improving at all. Well, I think most of the pieces you reported there were about people who'd had parking tickets and were unhappy about them. And uh, lots of people get parking tickets and no, lots no, of people what, are unhappy about them. What we've got there is the code being ignored, loopholes exploited, uh, there's meant to be an appeal is meant to be responded to within 14 days, one person waits 84 days. Yes, and if that's not just parking tickets, people being cross about parking tickets. Uh, well, what I'm saying to you is that for every one uh, 
issue that you've raised in that piece, I can show you a hundred examples of where practices have improved very significantly over the last two or three years since we've been enforcing our code. What you don't say in your piece is yeah. that actually we have expelled two members from our scheme in the last yeah. six months. Who pays your salary? Who, who a variety of different people pay my salary. <laughs> No, no, um, who, who, who funds you, you as the association? Well, the association is not just about private parking operators, it's about a range of different... Do the private uh, park parking operators fund the association? Uh, no, they don't. They, they only I see no money from the parking, the parking companies goes to your association. Uh, no, they pay, they pay a subscription rate, of course they do. And uh, that's so important. So they're funding you, so you're, it, you're not an independent regulator in any way whatsoever. Well, we've never pretended to be an independent regulator. What we are is, is putting in place a form of self-regulation. What we'd like to see is government regulate the sector in a much more robust way, and particularly to help the people that you featured in, in your piece there, an independent appeal service. So, fo so far you've, you've expelled two members, have you? We've expelled two, two members for serious breaches of our code. A, yeah. a further three have left, in fact, because... So that's five altogether? Uh, so that's five that have left. Okay. And are you happy, Mr Evans, at this level? I mean, don't you think they should be punished a little more severely? And two years ago, there was a step change in the control of this industry. Um, DVLA released information to around 600 companies and individuals yeah. to manage parking Which previously. none of us who gave those inf that information to you ever gave permission for. Two years ago when we explained to them that they needed to join this scheme and comply with these rules, um, around 450 of those companies stopped receiving any information from us. Huge change then, incremental improvement now, things getting better, tighter, We've got month to stop by month. There. Yeah. Thank you very much both of you for Thank coming you. in. Chris. Thanks, Annie. OK, responses from the individual companies we featured. APCOA, who took three months longer than they should have done to reply to Julie Greensmith's appeal. They blame a clerical error. Uh, they've apologised to her, cancelled the enforcement notice, so they've acted appropriately to the matter, um, and uh, they say it's a satisfactory conclusion. Now, UK Parking Control say that under the code supplying photo evidence isn't compulsory, so as far as they're concerned, they haven't breached it. They accept the photos of Luke Harrison's car on their appeals website, didn't have time and date stamps, but the ones on their pay charge website did. And Parking Eye, they say the time and the date rules only apply to photographs on tickets and not those on letters. And as they've been given special dispensation to carry on using the word penalty until later this year, they don't believe they've breached that uh, part of the code either. And finally, Searchlight Security Solutions of Penzance, they told us they've now removed all references to fines from their website, which is interesting because this afternoon we went on the website and found the word still there. To comment on that or any of tonight's other stories, then please email us on watchdog at bbc.co.uk. That's the address. You can also text, text us by dialing triple eight double two and starting your message with the letters WD. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, the details of how to do that are on your screens now. Thanks, Chris. And always when it comes to private parking tickets, we're inundated with viewers asking, should I pay? Alas, we can't give individual legal advice, but you can find general guidance on our website. There's the address, bbc.co.uk slash watchdog. Matt. Now the country's gearing up for the celebration of the decade. Getting ready to raise a glass to a couple.